Okay, my friends, this is going to be very interesting. I am going to be doing a video describing precisely what electron flood theory encompasses. Now, it's going to change virtually everything about the atomic model because it's made up of dipoles. All right, now, I want you to think about this before I do this other video. What is heat? What is heat made of and how does heat work? What makes things hotter and hotter and colder and colder? What happens to this? What happens to the table of elements as they get hotter and colder? All right, that's the first thing I want you to think about. All right, the next thing I want you to think about in the realm of heat is what is absolute zero when you get to the coldest you can possibly get to. What time, you know, why is that? You can't get any colder. And how hot can hot get? Think about that. Think about what are the particles. You know, I'm going to be showing them, and like I say, there's 1823 dipoles. A dipole is just nothing more than a magnet, a bar magnet. And there's 1823 or so in that area that make up a nucleus. That's going to be my claim. Now, we're going to be going into the Crookes radiometer. How does that work? That, nobody's been able to explain that 150 years. It's a toy. Cannot be explained. And I think I have an explanation for it, but I also am not certain. In my model, there's two particles that make up everything that exists. Only two. This one never, ever, ever changes. It's just a solid black ball, and it's a dark muon. And then the electron is a white electron. It can get big, it can get small. It has no mass whatsoever. That has all the mass. That's the particles that make up the nucleus, and the nucleus makes up the atoms, and the atoms make up molecules, and molecules make up matter. All right, this just starts to discuss the differences between dipole electron flood theory and the standard model. And there are significant differences and there are some similarities. But dipole electron flood theory says there's nothing but these two particles. And two together is what we would call an electron. They call a gluon, that's fine. And two gluons together make up a photon. We have seen these and we have done these with experiments and they have not been able to, to get to this level because we use laser. They use protons, huge particles, and they're just gigantic balls of these. And when they hit theirs, they get smashed in bits and pieces, and it's a particle zoo. They can't even determine what they're looking at. It's been 60, 70 years of playing around looking for something. They have no idea what they're looking at still. All right? This is what makes up a proton. This is what makes up a neutron. This is what makes up everything there is in stable quantities. Stable quantities means for some reason, and this is something I really can't explain, it has got this, something to do with resonance. At certain quantities, there's just enough becomes stable. And then in between there and the next stable quantity, there's literally thousands of these particles. So the, uh, hydrogen is not one big hydrogen proton and an electron, it's about 1825 dipoles. All right, so we're going to get into this, but I want you to start thinking about what you think cold is and heat. And what is electricity? Those are the three things. What makes cold? What makes heat? And what makes electricity? And we'll go from there. Okay, so again, this is the particles we see. This is a photon. Half of each one of these is a, a electron. Back to back, they make a photon. These are the same particles they found at CERN and Fermilab, but they just don't know where they came from because they started with too much stuff. They just have all debris. We started with light. We can see the light manifest itself into photons, and then we were actually able to split the photon creating fission and fusion. Muons, sterile muons, and electron showers. So think about what we're, you're going to be 
asked to think about, which what, what is he? What is cold? What is electricity? It's all from light. Every single bit of those things are, are, are parts of light. Cold, heat, and electricity. It's all comes from light. How does that work? Think it over because we're going to go over to Crook's, ra Crook's radiometer. All right, this is the toy I'm talking about. They cannot resolve. A Crook's radiometer, known as a light mill, consists of a low pressure glass bulb containing a set of vanes mounted on a very frictionless spindle. So the vanes spin around the spindle. Each vein is coated black on one side and white on the other. The vanes rotate when exposed to light with faster rotation for more intense light. And guess what? Cold makes the spin reverse. Figure that one out. Alright, I love you all. This is going to be fun. Crook's radiometer. Try to figure that one out.